In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us.
be with you. Let us pray. O oh, King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thank you. 
gracious, undeserved love for us, what an awesome and precious gift it is. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me along, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn, through the storm, through the night, lead me along, through the night, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Take my hand, precious Lord, Lord, leave me home. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. 
and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
grace, mercy, and peace to each of you from God our Father and from our risen and ascended Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text from 1 Peter, our theme, like a roaring lion. Most of us probably haven't heard a lion roar, at least not in person. Maybe some of you have been out in the woods and heard some other animal um, howl or roar, and it sent shivers up your spine or raised the hairs on the back of your neck. A wild beast, a wild animal. It's the imagery that St. Peter is using in our text. The roar of the lion that would terrify all the creatures of the forest. They would cower in fear. That's the image that St. Peter is using as he speaks about Satan, who he is, what he does. We look at our text this morning in two parts, and the first is this, that Satan is a roaring lion. It's a good description. Peter is writing to a church that is literally and physically under attack. Christians are being persecuted. It's illegal, in fact, to be a Christian. It's open season on them. Satan is, is desperate to put this new movement out of existence. And so Peter writes, don't be surprised at these fiery trials that you are undergoing. Don't be surprised that you are suffering, that you are being insulted for the name of Christ. Instead, rejoice and be glad. It shows that you are holding to the truth, that Satan is afraid of you, that he wants to destroy you. Christians should not think that just being a Christian makes life always easy and always good, never any trials, never any problems. Just the opposite. Because we are Christians, Satan seeks all the more to come after us, to destroy us. Suffering in this life, it's reality. But also, reality is what Peter says, verse 10, that after this life, after we've suffered a little, God has called us to an eternal glory, to a life when there will be no suffering. So don't be afraid of suffering. Don't be ashamed to suffer. Except, Peter says, if you suffer because you've done something wrong or stupid, if you suffer because you've broken the law, if you're a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or even a meddler, well, then yeah, you're gonna suffer, but you deserve it. And you'll get no pity from me. And there's no glory, no praise in such suffering. But Peter says, what I'm talking about is not that kind of suffering when we suffer for doing something wrong but the suffering that Satan places upon us as he seeks to pull us away from Christ. Satan is like this roaring lion, verse 8, seeking someone to devour. Satan, Peter says, is our adversary, our enemy. And there were, there were other wild animals in Peter's day but I think there's a reason he speaks of a roaring lion seeking to devour. And that's because in Peter's day, Christians were actually being taken to the Colosseum, thrown in, and then lions, hungry lions, lions that had been purposely starved, were let go. 
into the same arena. And the spectators of Rome would gather and watch as Christians were being devoured by lions. And so I think Peter uses this imagery because it's real. And because he sees how Satan is at work in such a terrible way. It's true today as well that Satan is a roaring lion. Here in our country, he may not be devouring us in that way, but that really doesn't matter because he is seeking to devour us spiritually, to devour our faith, our relationship with God. And that, my friends, is far worse than any kind of physical devouring or suffering. Satan is a strong opponent. He is merciless in his attacks, merciless when he thinks that he can grab us and take us, prevent us from being a Christian or entering heaven. He roars loud. In Peter's day, it was indeed against the law to be a Christian. Outright suffering that happened. But no matter when we are Christians, there's a sense in which being a Christian means that we are going against the flow. Satan always tries to make the flow go the other way, to make the easy path, the path away from Christ. We've lived in a nation where a majority of people are Christians. But that doesn't mean that Satan is not at work. He's even more cunning in his attacks, more deceitful in his methods in our land. He knows he can't really attack the concept of being a Christian. That in our society is is an acceptable and, and good thing. And so Satan attacks some things that Christians believe some things that are in the Bible, but that our society is not sure about. He seeks to get Christians ridiculed, looked down on for things like believing that God has made this world. After all, scientists teach evolution. But scripture is true. God made this world. And true science supports that. And one day, I am sure, scientists in the majority will understand that. Because the science of evolution cannot hold. Because it contradicts what God has done. Satan seeks to to get us on the hot seat for believing that abortion is wrong. And yet, thankfully, in our land, though there are many abortions, life and its sacredness is is rising, and people understand that all life is valuable. More recently, Satan attacks, saying homosexuality is fine, there's nothing wrong with it in the Bible, or the Bible is wrong in what it says, or it is outdated. Satan roars at us, tries to make us afraid, tries to confuse us, tries to make us suffer for being a Christian. And at times he succeeds in that suffering. But you know, my friends, that that suffering actually makes us stronger. Peter says, don't be afraid of that. Satan will be our roaring lion throughout our life. Peter wants us to know that. But there's another message from Scripture besides the fact that Satan is a roaring lion. And that fact is this, that Jesus is the greater lion. Scripture calls Jesus a lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
Jesus, a descendant of Judah, of that tribe, the greater lion. You see, Satan seeks to imitate Jesus, seeks to be a roaring lion, strong and powerful, seeks to usurp the power and position of Jesus. But he fails. If two lions of, of near equal strength, male lions, they may go at it. They may fight for the pride, for the female lions. But if there's two male lions of vastly different strength, the weaker one will flee. It would be a mistake to fight. True with lions, true in, in many species as well. Well, Satan found out that it was a mistake to fight Jesus. Satan wounded in that battle. The weaker one, the pretender. Satan, he may roar when he thinks that Jesus is not around, but when he senses Jesus' presence, he flees. Jesus is the greater lion, the king of the forest, king of heaven and earth, king of his church. It was on the cross that Jesus defeated Satan once for all. Victory is complete. And yet in this life, if we seek to go against Satan on our own, guess what? He is a roaring lion. He has power to devour us when it's us against Satan. But in Christ, with Christ standing beside us, Satan is afraid. Satan will flee. Peter says, resist Satan. Resist him in Christ. Yes, in Christ, you may have to endure suffering in this world, just as Christ did. But in Christ, you have victory. In Christ, you are called to eternal glory. In Christ, Satan whimpers. In Christ, Satan cowers. In Christ, Satan is defeated. The hymn writer is right. I walk in danger all the way. But when I walk with angels all the way, when I walk with Jesus all the way, then my walk is heavenward all the way. Jesus, Thursday, we celebrated the ascension, his ascension into heaven. And his ascension means our ascension will follow as well. All who believe in him will ascend body and soul for all eternity. In our gospel, Jesus says, I am praying. I am praying for you, for those that God has given me. Father, keep them in your name. Make them one. One with me, one with you, one with each other. Jesus prays and intercedes for us. That we would stay with him. That Satan would not harm us. That his roars would not make us afraid. That we would know and rejoice in the power that is ours, the power of Christ, the roaring lion of the tribe of Judah, the lion who watches over us, his pride, his people, who protects us, keeps us safe, guards us, and one day will bring us to heaven. Jesus, the greater lion. That, my friends, is the way that it is. The seventh Sunday of Easter in the year of our Lord 2017. In Jesus' name, amen.
We join now in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 159. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. We worship the Lord with our offerings at this time. Also in your pew, there's a red folder. If you would take that out and sign it and pass it to those who are seated next to you. This morning, we include Gerald Freudenberg, who was uh, diagnosed with lung cancer this past week. Pray for God's work and healing in his life. We rise for prayer. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, that he is indeed the Lion of the tribe of Judah, that in his presence even Satan cowers and trembles and is afraid. And so we pray that you would protect us from the roaring Lion of Satan, our adversary, 
who seeks to devour us, that you would protect us and keep us safe. You would give to us a strong faith in Jesus, that we might stick with him, that Satan might flee. Lord, be with us in times of suffering and trouble. Use them to strengthen our faith and keep us ever close to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, rejoice this day for the young people of this congregation who are graduating from high school. We thank you for them, for their faith, for the gift of baptism, for the work of your Holy Spirit in their lives. We pray that you would lead and guide them in the paths that, that you know, that you would reveal these paths to them the vocations that you have in store for them, that you would use them for good within your kingdom, for good within their families, for good within the church and in your world. We ask, dear Lord, that you would bless and be with and keep always Keisha, Bailey, Rob, Samantha, Dylan, Rachel, Justin, Hunter, Courtney, Hillary, and Noah. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we pray for those who are ill, for your healing hand to rest upon all in any need. We ask, O oh Lord, for your spirit to surround Jerry, Arlen, Lois, Lori, Jim, Mike, Jerry, I own. Colleen, Mary, Corey, Shar, Lynn, Dave, Chloe, Sally, Brandon, Mary, Calvin, Mary, Jay, Aiden, Jack, Lori, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God. We pray for those who celebrate special days this coming week. We give you thanks for Bob and Elaine for the 66 years of marriage, for June and 88 years of life. We pray that you would fill them with your joy and with your love always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, on this memorial weekend, we remember and give thanks for all of those who have served in the armed forces of our land, especially those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, who have given their lives in defense of the freedom and the rights and privileges that we enjoy in this country. We pray that we would always remember and honor and give thanks for these sacrifices. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we remember also all of those who fill the cemeteries of our land, all of those who have died in the faith, all of those who you have called home. We thank you, Lord, for their life, for their witness, for their example, for their memory. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation,
warm welcome this morning to those who are guests today. It's good to have each of you here. Thanks to our musicians, uh, Gloria, and to uh, Michael and Jamie, uh, Arlo for singing. Arlo had a pacemaker put in on Thursday, and he still uh, said, I want to sing today, so uh, thank you. We're glad that the pacemaker uh, went well. Newsletters for June are available in the mailboxes um, as you leave. Uh, tonight, baccalaureate for the Parkersburg uh, High School uh, class. Um, everyone is invited and welcome. Uh, if you're interested in helping with the Congregational Garage Sale, meeting, uh, first meeting Wednesday at 6.30. Um, Thursday, uh, foot care at 9.30. Uh, this might be our last foot care time. We really need uh, a nurse to, to kind of take over this ministry starting in July. Um, if you know of somebody, have any ideas, uh, let me know because we really would like to see this uh, continue uh, beyond June. Uh, also, uh, Thursday, the ladies invite anyone to join them for lunch at uh, Lake Valley uh, at the Merck. Uh, next Sunday, the BBS staff meeting and, and uh, lots of uh, information on BBS and the Narthex. Take some to invite any kids in your neighborhood, um, grandchildren, family, uh, anyone's welcome. Pray the Lord be with each of you. Keep you in his care this coming week. 